Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director Haynes, in last year's Intelligence Authorization Act, Senators Rubio, Warner, Heinrich, Burr, Blunt, and I created uh, the Arrow, the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, uh, to break down the stovepipes between the intelligence community and the military regarding unidentified aerial, marine, and other phenomenon, which could pose a risk to the safety of our service members, as well as collection risks against sensitive facilities and overseas military bases. As recent events have shown, we need more and better sharing between the intelligence community and our military and the stigmatization of the service members and personnel who come forward with this data is unacceptable. Do I have a commitment from you and each of our witnesses that you will work to reduce stigma, share intelligence between agencies, and as you're able with the public to ensure that we understand what's happening in our skies and seas? Yes, Senator, absolutely. And I agree with you that this is an issue and it's something that we've been trying to work through both by sending the message from leadership that this is important, but also creating mechanisms that allow for people to do this more easily and with less sort of uh, stigma associated with it. And is the Arrow Office fully funded in your budget? Yes, I believe it is. Uh, Can you make sure? Because it was left off last year so from both the DOD and Intel's budgets. So, right. So it's in DOD, but I think our support is funded in the National Intelligence Program, and I'll, we'll check to make sure. So everybody DOD. else can answer the question. I, I believe it is funded. Thank you. Yes. I support Senator. Thank you. Yes. Um, <clears throat> a related somewhat question is the issue of IC's agency's assessment with varying levels of confidence that most reported incidents can be explained by medical conditions, environmental, or technical factors, and that it's unlikely that a foreign actor, including Russia, is conducting a sustained worldwide campaign involving hundreds of incidents without detection with regard to the anomalous health incidents. And that report was received in a very negative way by personnel who have been affected by their families um, because it essentially says is there's no external cause which I think is really problematic. Um, I'm very grateful that the intelligence community has been uh, determined to make sure that um, healthcare is being met and the healthcare needs and that um, each of these service members and personnel are treated appropriately and humanely from that perspective. But I find it um, unacceptable that we are not continuing diligent analysis of possible causes. Um, I do appreciate that the Department of Defense continues to do research in that regard, and I'd like uh, General uh, Barrier to give us an update on how you're looking at this issue and how you are continuing to assess possible causes as well as uh, possible delivery mechanisms. And I'd like to include um, delivery mechanisms from above. So whether it can be delivered by a drone or a spy balloon through a collection device or collection uh, technology, I'd like an update, please. Thank you. Senator Gillibrand, uh, DI participated in the uh, intelligence community assessment. We had a multidiscipline team of, of very senior analysts, counterintelligence professionals, and technical people look at the, uh, at the issue. I, I do concur uh, with the assessment, but I also think our work is not done there. Uh, DIA continues to focus on, uh, number one, the care of our officers who have been affected. Uh, we are doing uh, some work on the analytical side, and we're doing work on the S&T side to uh, determine causation. And we'll continue that work, and I've made that commitment to my workforce. And then I'd like a supplemental answer in closed session as well. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Director Haynes, um, I've been working on legislation which would create a One Health Security Council to create a whole-of-government approach to address a broad range of biological threats to human, animal, and agricultural health. As part of the intelligence community study of the impacts of climate change on food security and social instability, how well positioned are you to support the U.S. in strategic competition for the kind of biotechnology uh, biotechnology innovations which will ensure our resiliency in the face of a rapid changing climate? This has been an incredibly uh, intense area of focus for us, and you've seen us put forward in budgets uh, essentially for bioconvergence. We've, um, you know, proposed quite a bit of money on this. We now have the National Center for Biosecurity, um, as opposed to it used to be the National Counterproliferation City um, Center. It is an area where you'll see even our recent head is somebody of that center is somebody with a history in this area and. Uh, and we are increasingly working on essentially um, different mechanisms by which we can both promote 
uh, greater exchange and access to expertise outside of the intelligence community and biotechnology and work, but also to understand better the innovations that are occurring there and try to make sure that we can take advantage of those so that we understand them for collection purposes and, and just for the record, um, post 9-11, we had the 9-11 Commission to assess what went wrong with regard to 9-11, what we could have done to prevent it. The fact that the intelligence community still disagrees on the origins of COVID is concerning. And I understand there's a massive lack of transparency from the Chinese government. However, um, I have legislation that will require a much more fulsome deep dive review sort of like a 9-11 commission report, to then inform our legislation about having a One Health approach, which is very similar as our post-9-11 approach to have no siloing, to have everyone at the table, to do constant assessment, both agriculture and CIA and DOD and FBI and um, Homeland Security. So I'd like your assessment of both of those pieces of legislation with an eye towards solving the problem long term. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Lincoln.